Elamoto celebrates its 50 years of service in Papua New Guinea. Hello viewers and welcome to Business PNG. In this edition, we take a glimpse of some of Elamoto's achievements in the last 50 years. While the company has invested quite a lot here, it has adapted to the development trends from our teething stage right through to the resource boom in recent years. Including the hiccups and minor setbacks, they are still here. And they are not going away anytime soon. Here's the CEO and Director of Ella Motors, David Purcell. I have with me David Purcell, the Chief Executive Officer of Ella Motors. David, welcome to the show. Thank you. It's a pleasure being here. David, this year marks the 50th anniversary for Ella Motors in PNG. How does this year differ from all the other years? Well, it really doesn't differ from anything else that we normally do. We've been privileged for the last 50 years to be part of the Papua New Guinea landscape. We continue to do that. That's our commitment to this country and it's our commitment to our suppliers and our shareholders. Mm -hmm. This year certainly is a celebration year for us and 50 years in any business is something to be truly proud of. It's our intention this year to continue to bring the very best options, vehicles and packages we can to Papua New Guinea, private residents, government officials and businesses. That focus will not change, mm -hmm. but what will change is the ever-developing state and face of Ella Motors across Papua New Guinea as we continue to grow the business in a responsible fashion. And speaking of growth, what um, plans for developing your business and or, or particularly your human capital as well? Well, human capital is, is, the, is the core part of our business. We deal in the people business. We just happen to supply motor vehicles and repair vehicles. That's what we do. We employ now just under 1,000 people. And I've had the privilege of being leading this company here in this country now for just over five years. Mm -hmm. And the number of employees has grown significantly by the better part of 25% in the last five years. And we're very pleased to continue to invest in human capital and development of what our business is and how we can improve the skill sets of our staff. We've embarked in launching what we call the Ella Academy. Now the Ella Academy is taking apprentices from the very first entry after schooling into the Toyota way, mm -hmm. introducing them into the Ella Motors way of doing business, training them on site in our own established training facility, which was established in 1977. So we've been doing this for a number of years. We know that the caliber of people that come through our training section is second to none in this country. We're very proud of our employees and what we can produce. Each year we bring in somewhere between 50 to 65 first year apprentices, be it panel beaters, painters or technicians. We're also undertaking investing in graduates from the university into the finance area, the marketing area and the sales area of our business. So we'll continue to do that and we're very pleased with the support we're getting from the community. Now in, in such a competitive market, um, you are, I understand, the leading automotive supplier. How did that come about and, and how long has it taken you to grow that? We started business here in 1963. We've been the leading automotive supplier to the Papua New Guinea community every year since that time. We continually thank the Papua New Guinean population for supporting us and being part of the landscape in this country. We don't take that for granted and we certainly don't take it lightheartedly. We're privileged to be part of this community here. Part of the success we've had right across the country is firstly, the number of dealership outlets we have. We have 16 dealerships spread across the country. Right. Secondly, we ensure that the products we bring into this country suit the environment and the conditions that exist within this country. There's many other people across the automotive world that have brought products into this country and sadly those products have not been able to stand up to the conditions that apply. Papua New Guinea is a very much a developing nation with tremendous rainfall mm -hmm. and challenging road conditions. That requires vehicles in this country to be built to an engineering standard that can actually stand up to those conditions. We will not bring a product into this country that does not do the job. So our vision and commitment, that's why we say Elamoto is your first choice. It's your first choice in Papua New Guinea for vehicles that suit the environment. That is our standard strategy and that will not change. People invest in, in products these days and it costs a lot of money to buy a new vehicle. 
And these vehicles need maintenance, and that's why we maintain the largest dealer network in this country, because we want to minimise the distance people have to travel to gain service and parts back up. We've invested significant money in parts inventory to make sure that the parts required, and it is a challenge, the parts required are always there in the right quantity at the right location. One of the investment initiatives we've undertaken recently is to expand in the Lay District by investing in a national distribution centre and parts warehouse. A significant investment for us, but that's all designed to take us into the next 50 years to provide a better level of service for Papua New Guineans right across the nation. Now, with the unprecedented growth that we've been having in our economy, uh, particularly due to the LNG project, how has that impacted your business and what sort of service levels have, have you had to raise your service levels in order to meet this? It's a very interesting question. We were fortunate to be part of the groundbreaking announcements of the LNG project, which I think will go down in history as one of the truly significant operations and initiatives in Papua New Guinea. That impacted our business in a very positive sense. It brought with us the opportunity of developing two separate entities of our company. We have a distribution network and we have a retail network. We did this to service the needs of the growth that's coming into this country. That helped us sharpen and improve our distribution techniques and importation techniques. It also sharpened up the way we deliver a better level of service at retail at each one of the dealerships of our customers. Further to do that, we also looked and we introduced a split operation which was a specific sales operation for LNG and government customers. No other operation in this country has done that and we're very pleased with the results and we're very pleased with the level of service that we have been able to deliver. It's also had a positive impact on our employees and the positive impact is, quite frankly, that our employees have grown significantly as a direct result of the increased number of transactions that's occurred across the whole economic face of Papua New Guinea. Businesses, all businesses strive for customer satisfaction. What's Ella Motors customer satisfaction statement? We say we are your first choice. Now like all businesses there are times when we, we do not deliver on that and we apologise for that when that occurs. It is very much a shifting target. One of the true things that we do is to make sure that all of our people understand that customer service is first and foremost in everything we do. We have a philosophy and that is the customer is right. Now I know that sounds like a cliche but it is important. The customer is right because the customers come to us to transact business. Every one of my staff know my personal vision and stated objective is to make sure that whatever a customer needs we do the level best we can to provide that in the shortest period of time. Sometimes that's challenging. Sometimes that's challenging for every business in this country and indeed every other country in the world. But the philosophy does not change. It is the statement that has built Toyota to where it is today across the world. We are supporters of that and we continue to strive to be better every day. Our interview continues. So that I think confirms and consolidates the need for dialogue to happen between the Motor Vehicle Traders Association and also the Papua New Guinea government. That's next. Now, there's a national working group that initiates dialogue with government and various sectors of industry. Let's find out from Mr. Purcell if there's a representative agency for the automotive industry. Now, David, there's a national working group uh, which, is, which does initiate dialogue between the government and various sectors of, uh, of industry. Is there a uh, representative um, agency that actually voices the, all the uh, challenges that are faced by your industry to the government? Look, it's, it's, it's actually a very good question and I, once again thank you for that. In the spare time that I've got, which is not much, I'm also the President of the Motor Trades Association in Papua New Guinea. Now this organisation is the voice and the, and the conduit back into government. I've had tremendous cooperation and They've been very, very supportive in what we're doing in terms of the last three transport ministers. And I've met with all of them to talk about opportunities. And as an association, I've said we are happy to partner with government at any point in time. Now the benefits of doing that, things like fuel quality, 
things like a safety ticket that PNG residents need to apply for every six months. I think it's important that the Motor Trades Association give input back to the government on how that current system works or does not work. In uh, terms of vehicle safety, sorry it's to important. You, but the, the, um, are the other uh, automotive dealers also represented? Yes, they are. The key automotive dealer groups in this country are part of the association. Right. So as an association, quite apart from Alamo Motors as a single entity, but as an association, we have made representation to the transport ministers, the last three, to talk about things that we think government ought to be aware of. And it's important that we have a voice into government, we think, in terms of the direction of fuel quality, the direction of vehicle manufacturing. Most importantly, the protection for Papua New Guinean citizens in terms of bringing unsuitable vehicles into this country. And if that happens, the Papua New Guinean citizens sometimes lose lots and lots of money. Mm -hmm. And as an association, we don't want to see that. We want to protect the rights of Papua New Guinean citizens so they're happy with the, the purchases they've made and the purchases meet the needs of, of their applications in this country. So in summary, we're very happy to be called upon when required to be a voice into the transport sector. I've discussed this with the Prime Minister, Mr O'Neill. I've discussed it with the Transport Ministers. I've discussed it with the Treasurer. And I've discussed it with the Mineral Resources Minister. I say that because as an association, it's important that government, should there need to be a, an opinion on motor vehicle or transportation needs, our association is ready to help if required. Right. And, and what has the response been? It's been very positive in as much as the transport sector is very interested in the opinions we have and the issues we raise. We understand the government of the day has many, many priorities on its plate. And so do the motor vehicle industry have many, many priorities on our plate. But as partners, we think we can actually have some synergy created by talking about things that unless these associations existed, there'd be two pillars of society as opposed to one voice. So we see that it's, a, it's an advantage to all people for us to at least share dialogue on things of mutual interest. And I think with the government's uh, focus on developing infrastructure at the moment, and particularly road infrastructure, that would be impacting your industry directly. Yes, well it does. And I think if we look again just at one thing, the growth in the automotive business in the last five years, in some years, year on year, it's been double digit. But frequently it's been 8 to 10% growth year on year. The new vehicle market in the month of April this year was nearly 900 vehicles. There was nearly 900 new vehicles sold in Papua New Guinea in April of this year. So multiply that by 12 and all of a sudden you see how big the market is. That's right. See, in the year that just concluded, we sold 6,200 new Toyotas into Papua New Guinea. Go back several years, that was the total industry. And that number that I'm talking about is just Toyota sales. Right. So that, I think, confirms and consolidates the need for dialogue to happen between the Motor Vehicle Traders Association and also the Papua New Guinea government. Coming up next, we take you through Alamoto's history and some of their achievements. You're watching Business PNG and we're featuring Alamotos in their 50 years of service in Papua New Guinea. Here's a story to give you an idea of what it was like during the early stages of their operation, right through to the introduction of innovative programs and facilities to meet the demand of a fast developing economy in the Pacific. The very first Elamotos dealer opened its showroom on the 9th of February 1963 in Port Moresby. The Toyota Land Cruiser kick-started Elamotos 50-year market influence, a vehicle specifically designed to suit Papua New Guinea's rugged terrain. Upon setting up shop here, the company achieved number one market share position, a place it still holds to this very day. 
1967, it became the first manufacturer to import 1,000 Toyota vehicles in a single year. Today, that vehicle brand is the premier seller at all its 16 dealerships throughout the nation. In 1977, the first automotive training center was established in Port Moresby. The training program has grown over the years into becoming one of Elamoto's successful programs aimed at upskilling Papua New Guineans who want to pursue a career in the automotive industry. It's necessary to do that, Andy, because the, the complexities of the modern motor vehicle, they get more and more complex every year. The level of computer literacy required to service vehicles today needs to be understood. 1980 saw the highest Toyota sales record of 4,536 vehicles. All these and many more events recorded over the last 50 years mark the beginning of a legacy in Papua New Guinea's automotive industry. Elamoto's headquarters located in Badili, Port Moresby, today boasts of state-of-the-art facilities. Each facility is designed and built to cater for specific functions of an automotive dealer anywhere in the world. This is the Badili showroom. The facility went through a major refurbishment in 2006 and was opened to customers the following year. Since then, it has been working towards maintaining the highest standards of customer service. We have been working very closely with Toyota Tusho and Toyota to create the Toyota Way, uh, which is continuous improvement and set a standard for friendly customer environment. The Badili showroom was opened on the 22nd of March 2007 and this set a standard of our showrooms. Since then, we have made a significant investment to improve our customer environment and our soon-to-be-open Waigani showroom will continue to embrace the Toyota way. Upon entering the showroom, customers are greeted by the sales team and the array of products put on display. Sales staff are trained and developed on all aspects of Toyota, Yamaha, Hino and Messi Ferguson products. We measure all our inquiries that come through to Ella Motors. And from those inquiries, we then um, assess uh, the products the customers are looking for, uh, uh, the areas they're going to be using these products. And then from there, we then work towards to try and, and, and sell the best product for the customer. According to statistics, the Toyota brand still maintains the number one sport on the sales chart. The company is moving as many as five to 600 units of Toyota vehicles a month based on customer demand. Yamaha is another leading brand in the market. Yamaha, powering. This brand offers a range of products like outboard motors and boats and offers leisure activities through the Wave Runner and road bikes. To complement the brand is the Haynes Hunter, a fishing and leisure boat. 2012 alone saw 7,000 Yamaha pieces of equipment sold, proving itself as a high volume product. So it's, it's a very predominant market uh, with a, you know, providing power and also connecting communities through boats and outboards. So it's, it's an exciting industry to be in. Apart from the showroom, there's the pre-delivery inspection centre, also referred to as the PDI centre. It is a one-stop shop for all necessary fittings such as bull bars, mag wheels and roof racks. Also offered are safety inspection checks. Services rendered here are based on customer orders from Waigani, Badili and Tabubil dealerships. We have qualified staff in all areas of accessory fittings as well as uh, state-of-the-art equipment such as our air-conditioned tent room and our tire fitting machine as well as all other general tools and equipment. Apart from the facility which we have here, the company has in plans uh, a state-of-the-art larger facility which will be based in Leh and that should service the rest of the dealerships throughout the country in 2014. And this is one site you'd find in each branch throughout the Elamotos network in the country. 
a service workshop manned by the Priority Maintenance Service team. Here at the Badili facility, we meet Doris Meliwane, the team leader and the only female member currently on the floor. Dressed in overalls among her male colleagues and wearing her hair short, she can easily be mistaken for a male from afar. It's very challenging. I'm working as a tradeswoman now, so very challenging to look after the boys, but it's good I'm learning and getting stronger. This team of highly skilled professionals are trained to meet customer satisfaction. We do services only which is uh, for A, B and C services. And we try to do it within, uh, say it's fast, fast and efficient. So we try to do it within A and B services in 30 minutes and for full service in one hour. And that's not all. Another facility that will be introduced shortly is the Hino truck facility. Hino is a product that's shown strength in the road and construction industry. With the Hino truck, it's, been, it's got a very, very strong um, reputation and it's number one in the market, particularly in construction and containments. Uh, for example, the FS dump is a 10 cubic meter dump truck. We run very, very aggressively in that market. We're market leaders. And also with the Prime Mover and the, the Hino 8x4 twin steer, which carts containers. So it's very much in the heavy end of the market. Uh, in the other areas, it's an area that we've been new and we're developing in and we're looking to grow and be very effective in that area because we've had a very strong reputation here now where it's been known as reliable, durable and king of the road. The automotive dealer also supports the agricultural industry with its Messi Ferguson products. All in all, Ella Motors is optimistic in the growth of the PNG economy. Company CEO David Purcell is confident the country is entering a period of stabilization and consolidation. And the automotive dealer stands ready to brace the challenges that come with it. 50 years on, and its commitment to the Papua New Guinean customer remains on the top of its priorities. Up next, a story into Elamoto's apprenticeship program. Stay tuned. Ella Motors continues to lead the way in many innovative areas in the automotive industry. Today, the company boasts of an effective apprenticeship program designed to upskill Papua New Guineans the Toyota way. Something the car retail industry hasn't seen for almost 30 years is a technical training program. And Ella Motors has a highly sought after apprenticeship training facility, the only one of its kind in the country. Initiated in 1977, the program has evolved over time to meet current global trends in the automotive industry. 141 apprentices have qualified for the program and have undergone a four-stage process at the Badili facility. The program is a four-year syllabus with theory and practical courses. Special trainers conduct what Ella Motors calls block training sessions. Six apprentices from all 16 dealers nationwide spent four weeks in a year at the Badili training facility, working on the latest engine models. According to the company's learning and development manager, Ben Johnson, this program plays a strategic role in structurally making sure that the company has its human capital for the foreseeable future. And we want to keep them. We've trained them. We believe they're part of us. They uh, understand our culture. Um, and uh, we try very, very hard to retain all our apprentices into our, our, our environment. Um, we currently have a lot of our senior management uh, at our dealers uh, actually underwent an apprenticeship with Elamotors sometime in their life. This year's first year program saw the intake of 25 apprentices undergoing four semesters. The program promotes positive culture. It is designed to instill good social obligations and discipline in the specific field of expertise. The syllabus is in line with the standards of National Apprenticeship and Testing Board. Each apprentice signs an agreement with the board and Ella Motos. 
our first year program, which we're beginning this year. Uh, we've just recruited 25 uh, uh, um, uh, Papua New Guinean uh, uh, candidates. They will now be uh, accommodated here in Port Moresby for one full year. Where in the past we would bring them in for a few months and then send them out to the dealer network. We are now uh, going to keep them here in Moresby um, to do a one year program. Each course has an apprentice master and the trainees live in a 20 room dormitory with mess and a recreational facility. Elamotos has placed a large investment into the program. At the training facility, we got to speak with Atai Nepang and Daniel Topital. Atai completed her apprenticeship last year while Daniel is in his third year. Every technician has goals. So my, my goal is to get a uh, DMT, uh, a recognized uh, diagnostic master technician in mind. That's, that's my goal. Atai has an interesting story to tell. Just like Doris Meliwane, team leader of the Priority Maintenance Service, Atai has made her mark in what was once a male-dominated field of expertise. Well, because I was a female, you know, they've always had a fair treatment. And they've always had this respect. They've always had this respect in me, so every time when I ask or if I have a query when I go to them, they're always there to help me. She completed her training last year as a certified mechanic and is now promoted to service advisor. Started in 2008, her inspiration to pursue a career in this field was her father. I've always had this in me, like, oh, I'll, if my father is like this, I'll try to be like him. I'll say, because I've spent most of my life getting tools and giving it to my dad, making his cup of coffee and, you know, standing around him, watching him do this. Both stories of Doris and Atai display the company's effort in promoting equality in a male-dominated working environment. The apprenticeship program that Alamotos provides has changed the lives of hundreds of Papua New Guineans in the last 36 years since being initiated. And with the growing demand in this particular area, the automotive company plans to strengthen its intake capacity in the coming years. Going forward uh, with our Vision 2015, um, I think that uh, we, we will really work hard to, to strengthen our intakes as we have in the past. We have an absolute commitment to Papua New Guinea. We have an absolute commitment to continue to grow and partner with the population of this country and we'll see a considered and strategic expansion of our business that will guarantee that what we produce and deliver to the Papua New Guineans is the very best we can in this country. And that's been our edition of Business PNG. If you'd like to view the program again, log on to our website. Also, remember to send us your feedback on Facebook or email. And before we go, on behalf of the Business PNG team, we'd like to congratulate Ella Motors on your 50 years of service in Papua New Guinea. I'm Festus Maigenap. Bye for now. <laughs>